Hi everyone, welcome or welcome back to How to Train Your Gavin. I would consider myself a bit of a Goosebumps expert at this point. I have been reading through the entire main Goosebumps series since last year, so I have done a complete reading vlog for the very first 62 original Goosebumps books, as well as a ranking video for doing the Goosebumps books from worst to best, and then I have also covered the Goosebumps series 2000 series, and most recently I have done the Horrorland and the Hall of Horror series. So I am four main series deep into Goosebumps out of six. Be sure to stick around to see what I think of the next two main Goosebumps series, which will be Most Wanted and Slappy World, which I'll be covering next year. Unless you're watching this in the future, they might already be out, who knows? So I've read well over 100 Goosebumps books. So for better or worse, I think I know quite a bit about Goosebumps. Now I do absolutely love and adore Goosebumps. I owe Goosebumps and R.L. Stein my life. <laughs> Goosebumps is what got me into reading way back in the 90s. Fun fact, I was born two months before the original Goosebumps series began, so I feel like for that reason alone, me and Goosebumps are like kindred spirits. Now, I do criticise Goosebumps a lot. I admit I do. I do still have a lot of love for it, but I can also hate it at the same time. R.L. Stein turned from being my personal hero to a menace. He needs to be stopped. But I still absolutely love and adore Goosebumps, and I feel like it will always be a part of me, a part of my channel. So let's do my very first ever tier ranking video. So I'm going to tier rank the original 62 Goosebumps books by covers, and I also have the first 32 UK covers in here as well, because for some reason in the UK, we had a totally different illustrator. I have no idea who that illustrator is. They have not been identified and maybe for good reason. So we have different covers for the very first 32 Goosebumps books. And then from the horror of Camp Jelly Jam onwards, we have pretty much the same covers as the American covers, but with slime around it essentially. Now the original American cover artist is called Tim Jacobus and honestly what an absolute legend. I genuinely feel like the Goosebumps series wouldn't be as popular as it was if it hadn't been for Tim's covers. What an incredible artist, like seriously. I mean, there are covers that are better than others, and I will not be holding back. I will say exactly which covers aren't that great, but I do just want to say and put it out there, Tim is a fantastic artist. This is not a video bashing him if I put something in a low tier. This is just my thoughts and opinions on these covers. But Tim, if you're watching this, you're an icon. So I do have all of the covers down here, and I'm going in the order of when they were published in America, so it's not the UK running order, which is where I'm from, which is why I'm including them. But yeah, I thought I would go in the order of why I think most people are accustomed to. So let's go through the tier rankings then. So at the top here, we have R.L. Slay, the iconic, legendary covers that are just pure goosebumps and they are what you think of when you think of Goosebumps, and personally my favourite covers. And then in the second tier view, I'll be where you're in for a scare. Obviously it should be read up where you're in for a scare because these are the books, but you know, we're judging based on cover alone. We are judging books by their covers. So we are using our eyes to rank these. So I've done view where beware instead of read up beware. Oh, and I've just, oh my gosh, and I've just realised I can't spell, there we go. And then in the third tier, we have like half the series, Mediocre. I mean, these are covers that I think are very middling and not the best, but not quite the worst just yet because in the bottom tier, we have It Came From Hell. And I feel like this was like such a funny little thing that I did because It Came From Beneath The Sink is a book title from the original series. So It Came From Hell, I think fits the bottom tier. So those are covers that I think are cursed, awful, god awful, the worst Goosebumps covers ever, and I feel like this tier is going to be reserved for a lot of the UK covers. <laughs> a lot of the UK covers are diabolical. Yeah, that is my tier ranking system, so let's go ahead and rank these books. So do let me know in the comments below your favourite Goosebumps covers and least favourite Goosebumps covers. I'd love to know, I'd love to chat about it. So firstly, we have Welcome to Dead House, the American cover. I think this cover is incredible, quite honestly. I think that should go in R.L. Slay. I think it's iconic. I think when you think of Goosebumps, you'll probably think of the very first ever one. I feel like it sets the tone so well. It's atmospheric, it's creepy, it's a creepy house. So I genuinely love, genuinely love the very first cover of it. The UK cover though, you know, I still quite like the UK cover. I don't think it's as good, but I love the kind of skull sinking into slime with the tombstones around it. I feel like that's quite atmospheric. And some of my favorite Goosebumps books are the ones where, you know, there is real fear and genuine kind of story to it, rather than like the fake scares and the jokes and pranks and stuff. So I feel like that's actually a pretty 
decent cover as well for a UK cover. Stay Out of the Basement, um, that is an iconic image. It really is. I don't know if it's quite R.L. Slay though. I don't know if it's quite the best of the best. I do think there is another version of this cover as well that came out in 2003, but I'm just using the original, original cover. I remember this being the box art for the whole media release of the TV show episode. And again, I do love that. Okay, I think you view every way you're in for a scare, I think. I think it doesn't quite... I don't know, yeah. It, it's really good though, it is really good. <laughs> Stay out of the basement for the UK. I hate it. I do, I hate the UK cover for Stay out of the basement. The kind of smiley face coming out the slime at the bottom there, it just, it, it looks silly. It just looks silly to me. And I really don't like it. I think it came from hell. I think it's cursed. Monster Blood. I hate the Monster Blood series, but I do quite like this cover. Not quite honestly, I think, but I think having the darkness coming from the top of the stairs and like it's lighter down at the bottom of the stairs, it's kind of going off that fear, at least that I had as a kid, when I would look up the stairs and it would be dark upstairs and I'd be scared that there'd be something up there. And I feel like the Monster Blood cover encaptures that very well. And having the Monster Blood coming down the stairs is quite creepy. Definitely creepier than any of the Monster Blood books. The UK cover for Monster Blood, it came from hell. Again, it's a really silly one and I don't like it at all. Having like a kind of jack-o'-lantern kind of smiley face on a metal can, it's, I mean, I, I don't really like it all that much. Say Cheese and Die, that is an iconic cover. Oh, I, yeah, I think I want to put in R.L. Slay. I think that's an iconic cover right there. I love the kind of skeleton people <laughs> in that. I will say I think the cover for Say Cheese and Die Again, which will be coming up later, is better. So I'm kind of debating whether putting it just in View Everywhere You're In For A Scare or in R.L. Slay. But I do think the Say Cheese and Die cover is so iconic. And it's such a great read as well that I think RL Slay is probably where it belongs. The UK cover, it came from hell. Seriously, when I tell you a lot of these UK covers are bad, I genuinely mean it. Like that one is just not that good. The Curse of the Mummy's Tomb, to me, it genuinely looks like he is getting a passport photo taken and I don't love it. He literally said cheese and died. So I think I'm gonna put him in like the half the series mediocre. It's not doing anything for me. I like the glowing red eyes and it is beautifully illustrated, of course, but I think it's just like too up close and he's so stationary. It looks like he's genuinely trying to stay still for a passport photo. So we're gonna move on. I do actually quite like the UK version of the mummy as well. He looks quite sinister. Like, oh gosh. I think I probably do prefer it to the American cover, I'm not gonna lie. I think I might put a view everywhere you're in for a scare because it's just like the green skin he's kind of reaching up and trying to grab you almost and the way he's looking directly at you as well it looks really good yeah I think I prefer it to the American cover of that one it has a lot more action going on and yeah you sound off below if you think I'm wrong let's get invisible uh, I like kind of like the cover for let's get invisible really don't like the book but I think the way that's illustrated it does look pretty good. I would probably put it before Kiss the Mummy's Tomb though. I mean, not that it's gonna let me, so it's gonna stay right there. Yeah, I think it's it's fine. It's a it's a pretty fine cover. The UK cover though, it came from hell. It came from hell, like what the hell? Like what is that guy doing? He's kind of like smile screaming almost. He's like, ha. Huh? It just doesn't seem scary and it's just, it looks so stupid. So that's definitely going at the bottom. Night Limb Dummy, RL Slay. R.L. Slave, it's an iconic cover, that one. Slappy is an absolute legend. I love how scary he looks in that as well. It's like so dark, his eyes are really intense, and it's Night of the Living Dummy, you know? It's it's iconic. The UK cover of it, um, I don't think it's as bad as Let's Get Invisible. I'll put it in mediocre, because I do kind of like that illustration of him. He looks almost mischievous, which if you know Slappy, and the Night of the Living Dummy series, you know, it kind of relies on jokes and pranks and being mischievous like that. But I don't even know if that is Slappy on the cover or if it's, is his name Mr. Wood in the first one? Or is it Dennis or something? I can't remember. Can't remember the actual original dummy. I think it was called Mr. Wood. I don't know if it's Mr. Wood or Slappy on that cover. It might be Mr. Wood because he is in more of it. But I like that illustration of the dummy. I think it's quite scary. Mmm, the girl who cried monster. I think it... 
it's probably my, one of my least favourite American covers because it just doesn't look scary. It's just a girl looking at somebody who's about to eat something gross. I mean, that moment in the book is quite scary, but as a cover, it doesn't give me any kind of joy. It doesn't bring me any fear, any joy, nothing. So that is going in... Mm, I don't know if it's like worse or the worst, though, actually. I'm, you know what? I'm going to move it up to mediocre. Yeah, I'll move it up to mediocre. I was being a little bit too harsh there, I think. The UK cover for The Girl Who Cried Monster. I mean, I kind of like the fact that she's genuinely screaming and she doesn't look ridiculous like him in Let's Get Invisible. Oh, and the books that are kind of sinking around here too. I would probably put that in mediocre as well. It's good. I, uh, I'm just gonna do that. Welcome to Camp Nightmare, American cover, iconic. R.L. Slay. Like just the way that looks, it looks so terrifying having something on the outside of a tent with the light spilling out the tent. It's just such a great visual and a terrifying visual as well, especially since camping scares me to death. But I love it, yeah. The UK cover though, it came from hell. Literally, what are they doing? And it looks like the guy at the back there is from the 80s. In fact, both of them look like they're from the 80s, maybe even the 70s. Are they extras in Let's Get Physical by Olivia Newton-John, RIP? What is going on there? I kind of like the fact that there is water pouring from the slime though. That really does fit with the book. The British covers, when it has a face on it, is very hit or miss. So Girl Who Cried Monster is a good kind of face on the cover. Let's Get Invisible, Stay Out of the Basement, Welcome to Camp Nightmare. Awful, absolutely awful. The Ghost Next Door American cover, I think is viewer beware you're in for a scare. It looks pretty scary, you know, a ghost on the welcome mat and it's about to come in. I like that a lot. The UK cover, hmm, she does look quite ghostly. I would probably say rather mediocre and at least she doesn't look as ridiculous as the guys on Welcome to Camp Nightmare. And the fire behind her as well, if you read the story, you'll know that's quite important. It looks rather haunting. It does look a little bit haunting, but I, don't think it's as good as the American version of it. Haunted Mask, come on. R.L. Slay. R.L. Slay, like that is one of the best visuals of Goosebumps I've ever seen. Seriously, like I love it. I love the story behind it as well. I believe Tim got his, was it his niece or his daughter or somebody in his family, a young girl to kind of be the model for Carly Beth for this. And I like the story behind that. And it's so scary and spooky and it's just so good. If I could get a full-on poster of that, a full-on art print of that, two rights I would. In fact, I would do that for a lot of the R.L. Stein Goosebumps covers, to be honest. The UK cover of it, I would say that's a mediocre cover for a fantastic book, quite honestly. I feel like the mask is looking rather silly on that. Not as bad as I think some of these ones. I find it iconic to me because it was my favorite book as a child. So I have fond memories of the cover, but I know objectively that's not a great representation of the haunted mask. So I will stick that down there. Be careful what you wish for. I hate the book. I also really don't like the cover of it. It just looks like the, I, I believe her name is Samantha. It just looks like she's getting a photo taken and somebody accidentally put the flash on and she's being blinded by the flash. That's what that looks like. And I mean, I know that's not her hands. Well, at least I don't think that's her hands, but that's it. When you look at it from my point of view, where it's a bit of a thumbnail kind of size, it looks like she's going like this. Yeah, it just looks rather ridiculous and I really don't like it. Same with the UK cover, her face looking so warped. It just looks ridiculous, it does, and not interesting in the slightest. I like the kind of idea behind that illustration though, because her name's Samantha Bird, and there's a bird on the cover, but it's just not great. Piano Lessons Can Be Murder also came from hell. I find that cover so boring, I don't know why. I mean, even having like the disembodied hands playing the piano, that could be a really scary visual, but it's not on this cover. That part in the book is quite scary when the main character hears the piano playing by itself, but I just don't think that's a good representation of it. It's the same with the Girl Who Cried Monster American cover as well. I just, I don't think that's a great representation of how terrifying that moment is. So yeah, that one's in, it came from hell and so is the UK one. He just looks ridiculous. He is the villain. I can't remember his name, but he is the, the villain and it kind of gives it away on the cover and the back of who the villain is because you don't know he's the villain to begin with. So I just find that so not good. <laughs> the Werewolf of Fever Swamp. I think that's like an iconic image 
I love that image, quite honestly. The wolf howling. It looks real and it looks scary. So I would say that is like one of the best werewolf stories in the series because there are a few and definitely a great illustrator cover i love that can't say the same about the uk cover that's going in it came from hell again it just makes it look silly it does like the werewolf behind him looks scary but then him with a kind of pointed eyebrow he just makes it a joke he makes it a joke so i don't love that at all you can't scare me I'm not a big fan of the book. In fact, I hate the book. The only good thing about that book is the very end, which is what this cover represents. So I think like half the series mediocre for the American cover because yeah, that would have been a scary moment if it hadn't have happened right at the end. Tell me better than the UK cover though. So that's going in that came from hell. Oh, One Day at Horrorland, Slay, that cover. That cover is gorgeous. Amazing, brilliant, show-stopping, shit on it, eat it. It's just like that great of a cover and of an icono... What's the word? Iconography? Iconography of the Goosebump series in general. The horror over the Horrorland sign. Genius. Absolutely genius. Love it. Again, can't say the same about the UK cover. Like, what is that? It's like a stone statue version of a horror and they've made the horror look absolutely ridiculous. Why? Why would you do that? It just looks stupid. This is why the UK cover illustrator was never revealed, I think. And then why I'm afraid of bees, I really don't like the US cover. Having a human head on the body of an insect or an animal or anything usually does come across as so silly and strange. And I feel like that's the way that comes across on here. And I know sometimes that might be the point, because it is a bit of a bizarre scenario, kind of swapping lives with a bee almost, or swapping bodies with a bee even. But I just think it doesn't look great, you know? And it's the same with the UK cover, it came from hell. I like how his face looks more illustrated than the one in the Tim Jacobus illustration. Tim Jacobus made it look maybe a bit too realistic, which meant it looked more kind of out of place on the bee's body. Whereas the more illustrative look of the UK cover makes it seem less strange almost, but it's still not a great cover at all. Monster Blood 2, I would say that's a pretty mediocre cover. I like the green slime drooping from the hamster cage and the hamster looking evil. I do quite like that. It came from hell for the UK cover. I mean, the hamster does still look quite scary, but just having the hamster on the cover is just like deep trouble. I do quite find that cover quite scary and it reignites my fear for Jaws and Jaws scared me as a kid. So having the shark underwater with most of the human body under the water but you can't really see their head, that's quite a scary visual. It is a bit of a rip off of Jaws, like the tagline, I think it was Jaws 2, just when he thought it was safe to go back in the water. But yeah, they kind of ripped off Jaws 2 in the tagline there. I think it's scary and I do have a fear of sharks so that definitely taps in on that. The... UK cover? I would probably put that in mediocre. It's kind of a bit scary. Having the tentacles around them is quite scary. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. Not great either because again, like, I just feel like his eyes are just a bit weird and yeah, not as good as the American cover. Scarecrow Walks at Midnight? I'd say that visual is quite scary, so I'll put that in view everywhere you're in for a scare. The fields, the scarecrow itself, beautifully illustrated. Mm, the UK cover, I think the scarecrow does look kind of scary in that. Oh, uh, we'll probably also put that in view everywhere you're in for a scare, actually. It does look quite creepy, and in person as well, I do own the UK covers for all the series. It does look quite creepy in person as well, so I'll give it that. Go Eat Worms, it came from hell for both of them, the American and the UK one. The American one, it's like what's the point? It's just like the book actually, like the book is so pointless and not scary and the same goes with the cover. I just, I hate that cover. But the UK cover is probably the worst. The UK cover is probably the worst cover I've ever seen of a Goosebumps book. That is the worst of the worst. Like that bird with the worms around it, that bird doesn't even look real. It looks like a robotic bird and it just looks stupid. I hate it. <laughs> okay, Ghost Beach, R.L. Slay. I love that cover. I really do. I love the big phantom ghost up in the sky and then there's 
tombstone and the moon and it's just perfectly atmospheric, perfectly creepy. It looks great. It looks so good. And my favorite Christmas books are the real genuine scary ones. And when you have a cover like that, like, that just looks genuine and scary. So love that that's going up there. I also really like the UK cover, not as much, but I like the hand coming up from the slime and the tombstone behind it. It looks like it's coming up from the grave. For that reason alone, I think Viewer Beware you're in for a scare for that one. It's probably one of the better UK covers, quite honestly. But still, that that cover right there. And I'm just looking at this RL slate here and I think I've done such a good job with that. I would think these are the best of the best covers. These are gorgeous. Return of the Mummy, I think is so much better than the Curse of the Mummy cover. So that's going to be everywhere you're in for a scare. I love the sarcophagus halfway open and the mummy reaching out. That is so good. And the sarcophagus looks exactly like Tutankhamun and I just think that's quite an iconic image. So yeah, Viewer Beware You're In For A Scale, I really like that one. I also really like the UK cover of it, so I'm gonna put it in the same tier. Don't at me. I just absolutely love the way that the mummy is illustrated. He looks sinister, he looks scary. He's reaching for you, you know? I, I love that, I think it's so good. One of the few great UK covers, in my opinion. Phantom of the Auditorium? Um, it's a bit plain, isn't it? But he is quite a scary looking for. Oh, Viewer Beware You're In For A Scare or like Half A Series Mediocre. Uh, I'm gonna put in like Half A Series Mediocre. It is just a man with a cape at the end of the day. I like the colours of it, but it doesn't make me scared or anything like that. The UK cover though, that's going in, it came from hell. It just looks, again, ridiculous. The UK illustrator probably just thought, how can I make these scary villains look as ridiculous as they do? So we have Piano Lessons, Can Be Murder. Also looking ridiculous, Phantom of the Auditorium, One Day at Horrorland, like just how ridiculous do those villains look. Attack of the Mutant, I think it's a pretty mediocre cover, in all honesty. I'm not a huge fan of the superhero books. Attack of the Mutant is probably like the best of the superhero books, but to me, not scary. It is quite a good, it is quite, it is, mm, I, I wouldn't say, I'm not gonna put it in your end for a scare, because I just don't think it looks scary. Yeah, it, hmm, I'm keeping it there. And then the UK cover, I don't care for it, so that's going in hell. <laughs> I just really don't care for it. Oh my gosh, my hairiest adventure, hell. And same for the UK one as well, hell. They are just not good covers in my opinion. They are some of the most ridiculous Goosebumps books too. I just don't think the covers look scary at all. At all. I might even prefer the UK cover over the US cover. Just because, again, it looks like he's drowning. And that adds a little bit more scariness to it but what a ridiculous storyline that was i really don't like that one on the opposite end of that in night and terror tower definitely oh, i can't even go up this is where it's going to get really awkward to to move about but in night and terror tower rl slay it's my second favorite goosebumps book and i love that image i love that cover so much the executioner coming down the scare scares <laughs> i mean yeah it's scary the executioner coming down the stairs is such a scary visual. Again, like I keep talking about scary visuals and stuff, but like covers are just such a huge representation of what you're actually gonna read. And I feel like it's such a good embodiment of that because you have the kind of, the claustrophobia of these stairs and the executioner coming down. It's like, where do you run? You've got nowhere to run. And I think that cover embodies that so well. It's just such a good cover, I love it. The UK cover, I wanna put in view, I'd be where you're in for a scare because I love this cover. Hands coming up from, a kind of dungeon in the rat. I have fun memories of this cover and I read this one so much as a kid. A bit of nostalgia is going into that ranking of it, but I think it's a really good UK cover. Cougar Clock of Doom? Uh, see, the thing is though, I keep saying some of these covers aren't scary, so I'm ranking them quite low. I don't think the Cougar Clock of Doom cover's scary, but I like the image of it actually. I mean, I might put it in mediocre, but... I like the idea of that bird coming out of the cuckoo clock and kind of the depth perception of it looks really good. I do like it. I may end up moving that at the end if I think I should, but yeah, that's going in there. And the UK cover came from hell. I just don't like it. <laughs> Monster Blood 3. I quite like the way he illustrated that cover, but I, again, I hate the Monster Blood book, so... And there's just nothing scary about somebody who's big. But I guess, I, I, I like it more than the Monster Blood 2 cover. Yeah, I think I'm gonna put that one in mediocre. Monster Blood 3 UK cover, it came from hell. Okay, nothing really scary about it. It came from beneath the sink. I quite like that cover actually. It looks a little scary. Glowing red eyes, maybe mediocre as well. 
Oh, you're in for a scare. Ooh. I do like the glowing eyes in the dark, though, under the sink. I'll keep it in view everywhere you're in for a scare for now. And then the UK cover, it came from hell. Like, what the hell? Like, seriously, like, it's just cleaning products on the cover. And I know that the actual monster is a sponge, spoiler alert. It just doesn't look scary at all. If this didn't have goosebumps slapped on the cover, I never would have picked it up. And I don't think a lot of people would have. Ooh, Night Living Dummy 2. Ooh. Is it as scary or is it as iconic as the original Night Living Dummy? So would I put it in RL Slay or you're in for a scare? I love, no, actually I'm gonna keep it in view of where you're in for a scare. There's another living dummy book coming up that I think has a better cover. But I love the colors of it. I love the juxtaposition between like how scary Slappy can be versus like the pink and the light greens and stuff. It's kind of a bit of a clashing cover. And I love that, I love that. But yeah, I think I prefer the next Live and Dummy cover. Now, Live and Dummy 2 UK cover. I want to put this in view of where you're in for a scare, actually, because I remember when I was a kid and I got the UK cover, I thought that the red paint was actually blood. And I guess you could kind of say it that way. I mean, it's obviously paint because he's got a paintbrush. Slappy has a paintbrush in his hand. But there's also the kind of thought, like, that could be blood. And I think Slappy looks quite menacing on that. He's kind of sinisterly happy in it. So I would also say that's like quite a scary UK cover and probably one of the better UK covers too. So I, I put that in view everywhere in for a scare. The Barking Ghost. Mm, mediocre for that one. Yeah, I think it's rather mediocre. That. It's just a dog with red eyes. It's not really that scary. And I do kind of like the UK cover for it as well. I think the dog looks scarier because of how more aggressive it looks. So I'm going to keep it in the same like mediocre range. But I do think I kind of like it a little bit more than the American one. So I'm just going to put a little ahead of that one. So now there's no more UK covers because, yeah, the Horror Camp Jelly Jam, we had the same covers moving forward with, with that book. I genuinely don't understand the love for the Horror Camp Jelly Jam, in all honesty. I know a lot of people love it, and I just don't see it. I really don't. So I'm going to get a lot of hate for this. But I just think the cover came from hell. I do. I just hate the way he looks. He looks ridiculous. I hate his smile. I just hate it. I hate it. And I guess you can say, oh, well, that makes a good cover because it elicits so much <laughs> hate from you and, like, you don't like it. And I'm just like, yeah, but it still came from hell. The Revenge of the Lone Gnomes. Um, hmm. I would say mediocre for that one. Yeah. I know there's an alternate book cover where one of the gnomes is picking his nose. And I find that quite hilarious. But I just don't find the cover very scary. I don't think it's one of the more iconic covers. I might be wrong on that, but yeah. A shocker on Shock Street, Mediocre, you know, a giant, is that a praying mantis? Or some kind of insect, a giant insect and stuff. Again, we have our Rostein obsessed with size and things being bigger. And I don't think it looks all that scary. Hoarding Mask 2, maybe view everywhere you're in for a scare for that cover. It is quite iconic. I do associate a lot with this cover. Not as great as the first cover, I don't think, but I like the added, like, Halloween aspect to it. Mm, I don't have a whole lot in RL Slay, quite honestly. I might move it into RL Slay for now, because I do think that cover is very iconic at this point. So uh, yeah, I'll move it up. The Headless Ghost, I really like this cover. View everywhere you're in for a scare. I love how he's coming down the stairs. He's holding his head. I think it's quite a scary looking cover. I think it's great. The Abominable Snowman of Pasadena, mediocre. Especially since when you read the book, you'll understand it's not that great. But I think having the kind of monster in the real world is a little bit spooky in a way. It's like, it doesn't belong there, but at the same time, I still can't get over the fact that I just don't really like that book. And the cover's like, meh. How I Got My Shrunken Head, I'd say view everywhere you're in for a scare. I like the fact that the shrunken head is part of just regular everyday objects and it really stands out because of that. And I think that image is a little bit iconic too. Okay, Night Living Dummy 3. I would definitely say this one actually is R.L. Slay. I just love the look of the dummies, like as if they're a family, which in some ways they are in like the attic of this really scary looking house. And I love that, it's like a family portrait. That's why I put Night Living Dummy 2 in View of Where You're In For A Scare because I like this one better. I think it's probably the best Night Living Dummy cover, but it's one of the worst Night Living Dummy books. So a great cover, I love that cover. Bad Hair Day, I don't like it. It has the same kind of face as the counselor in the cover of Camp Jelly Jam. 
it has that same like really bizarre looking, overly cheerful kind of way. And I don't like it. The rabbit does look a bit scary in that regard, but I just don't like it. It's not exactly unsettling me. It's just, I look at it and I'm like, I just don't like it. Eggman says from Mars, I think it's a really crap cover, not gonna lie. I just, again, that just doesn't look scary to me and it's not a great book. Same with The Beast from the East. I just think not a scary cover in the slightest. Great colours. It does have great colours in it. And Tim still did a great job illustrating it, but it does absolutely nothing for me. Oh, Say Cheese and Die Again. Right, it's one of my least favourite Goosebumps books of all time, right? But I think it's like a fantastic cover. I love the dead family. I think it's better than the Say Cheese and Die cover because you also have the dead child feeding the dead dog. And I love the kind of that touch to it as well. It like gives it more of a, a family atmosphere to it. That's just, it's really unsettling. I think it's fantastic. It's a great cover, but it's one of the worst Goosebumps books I've ever read. Ghost Camp, I really do love that cover too. I'm gonna put that in view where you're in for a scare. I love the fact that the ghosts are wearing clothes. So you can't actually see them. They're just like floating clothes. And like some of them are wearing caps. And it's just, I think that's great. Again, not the biggest fan of that book, but it has a fantastic cover. It's such a good cover. How to Kill a Monster. I think that is very mediocre. I think it could have been better. It just makes me think of Monsters, Inc. It makes me think that the monster is probably Sully. So you kind of want to hug the monster, not kill it. If the monster's hands weren't so fluffy, <laughs> I just think it would have looked scarier. But because it has fur, you instantly want to hug it. Legend of the Lost Legend. I uh, came from hell. A Viking woman? Okay. But it's not great. I, I don't really love it that much. Yeah, it's one of my least favourite covers in all honesty and probably one of my least favourite books too. Attack of the jack o -Lanterns. That book had so much potential but I didn't love it. I might actually put it in R.L. Slay because I love the idea of people walking around with these jack o -Lanterns on their heads and then also having the dog there as well with one is so good. It's so... Halloween-y. It's so fantastically atmospheric as well. I mean, it'll probably be like low down in the RL Slay tier list, but I think it is probably one of my favourites. So I want to put it up there. I think it's a great cover. Vampire Breath. I like the idea of him coming out of the coffin. And he does have a pretty scary face. At least Tim didn't make him have a bit of a ridiculous face like him in Camp Jelly Jam. But I think the vampire has a pretty scary looking face and it's kind of a scary looking cover. So... Yeah, I quite like the cover. Calling All Creeps, mediocre I would say. They just don't really look that scary either and they're not really scary either in the story but it's kind of comical that they're using a phone booth but it doesn't really do much for me, that cover. It's it's an all right cover but not great. Beware the Snowman, uh, mediocre, in for a scare. I think the Snowman looks scary. Like its face is quite contorted and scary looking so i would say that's kind of a scary looking cover i'm not gonna lie it is a scary looking cover I, i'll put it in the second tier I, I think it looks pretty good how i learned to fly it came from hell it's like probably one of the worst covers it's like his feet flying above san francisco i think that is and it's like okay what's scary about that what's the point in that and the seagulls as well they just don't really add a whole lot to it so this cover doesn't need to exist and neither does the book <laughs> chicken chicken yeah that also came from hell as I said, having a human face or a human head on the body of an animal or insect, like why I'm afraid of bees, I just hate. I just don't like it. I really don't like it. So that's probably another really bad cover. Don't go to sleep. I would say that's quite a scary looking cover. Yeah, I'm gonna put that in view of you where you're in for a scare. Especially when you're a kid and you're looking at that cover and you might have night terrors, you might be scared of the dark. Having like that hand coming over the bed is so creepy and sinister. Yeah, I think that's a really scary one. I'm gonna keep that one in view of you where you're in for a scare. The blob that ate everyone came from hell. Not much to say about it other than a giant brain looking thing with a giant tongue. Curse of Camp Cold Lake. View everywhere you're in for a scare? I don't know why I love... Hmm. Hmm. I never realised just how much I actually kind of love this cover. It's that skull with hair <laughs> just kind of half out of the water. It's quite scary and spooky. I love the colours of it. Very atmospheric. I put this in RL Slay actually. I love the look of that. Yeah, I feel good about that. I feel good about having that in RL Slay. I like that a lot. Yeah, let's keep it in there. My best friend is invisible. It came from hell. Just don't like that cover. It looks just what... Like, it's funny having that... I can't even say properly from my angle. It's like a tiny cover. 
It looks like some kind of raccoon thing, Yuma Bobby. It has a really weird face and the fact that it's screaming and stuff, it just looks ridiculous, so. Deep Trouble 2, I'd say that's kind of a mediocre cover. Compared to the first one, where he's half out of the water and the shop is beneath him, that's quite scary. But with Deep Trouble 2, it's a piranha, I think. Yeah, it is what it is. Haunted School, I love the book so much, but I think it's kind of a meteoric cover. You know, things flying out of a, a locker with eyes in the locker. It does look a little bit scary, but I think the faces look a little bit too... I don't know, the faces don't look scary enough. A bit of a mediocre cover, not gonna lie. Werewolf Skin, I kind of like that cover, actually. It's a little bit sinister. Maybe you might be where you're in for a scare. That's kind of a creepy looking cover. Yeah, that's all I can say about that one. I live in your basement. It just looks like a pile of shit. So it came from hell. It genuinely just looks like one big pile of shit. And somebody needs to do the laundry. It's like the mother has realized her son has left skiddies in his underwear and she scraped off all the skiddies and this is what we've left with. And Monster Blood 4 definitely came from hell. Have you seen those lips? Those lips are looking absolutely ridiculous. And there's one that's like sucking on the shower head. Like they look like old women. It's not good. It's not a good cover. It's not a great way to end the series, is it? So I think this is how I would rank all of the covers. Yeah, I'm kind of happy with this, I think. I would say looking at the RL Slay tier, I would say all of those covers are gorgeous. So in RLC, I have Welcome to Dead House, Say Cheese and Die, Night of the Living Dummy, Welcome to Camp Nightmare, The Haunted Mask, The Werewolf of Fever Swamp, One Day at Horrorland, Ghost Beach, A Night in Terror Tower, The Haunted Mask 2, Night of the Living Dummy 3, Say Cheese and Die Again, Attack of the jack o lanterns and The Curse of Camp Coal Lake. Yeah, I'm happy with that. View everywhere you're in for a scare, Welcome to Dead House UK, Stay Out of the Basement, Monster Blood, Curse of the Mummies 2 Me OK, The Ghost Next Door, Deep Trouble, The Scarecrow Walks at Midnight, The Scarecrow Walks at Midnight UK, Ghost Beach UK, Return of the Mummy, Return of the Mummy UK, A Night at Tara Tower UK, It Came From Beneath the Sink, Night Living Dummy 2, Night Living Dummy 2 UK, The Headless Ghost, How I Got My Shrunken Head, Ghost Camp, Vampire Breath, Beware the Snowman, Don't Go to Sleep, Werewolf Skin, and then in Leg Hoth series Mediocre, Curse of the Mummy's Tomb, Let's Get Invisible, Night of the Limb Dummy UK, The Girl Who Cried Monster, The Girl Who Cried Monster UK, The Ghost Next Door UK, The Haunted Mask UK, You Can't Scare Me, Monster Blood 2, Deep Trouble UK, Phantom of the Auditorium, Attack of the Mutant, The Cougar Clog of Doom, Monster Blood 3, The Bong Ghost UK, The Barking Ghost, Revenge of the Lawn Gnomes, a Shocker on Shock Street, The Abominable Snowman of Pasadena, How to Kill a Monster, Calling All Creeps, Deep Trouble 2, and The Haunted School. And then the worst Goosebumps covers in It Came From Hell, Stay Out of the Basement UK, Monster Blood UK, Say Cheese and Die UK, Let's Get Invisible UK, Welcome to Camp Nightmare UK, Be Careful What You Wish For, Be Careful What You Wish For UK, Piano Lessons Can Be Murder, Piano Lessons Can Be Murder UK, The Werewolf of Fever Swamp UK, You Can't Scare Me UK, One Day at Horrorland UK, Why I'm Afraid of Bees, why I'm Afraid of Bees UK, Monster Blood 2 UK, Go Eat Worms, Go Eat Worms UK, Phantom of the Auditorium UK, Attack of the Mutant UK, My Harry's Adventure, My Harry's Adventure UK, The Cuckoo Clock of Doom UK, Monster Blood 3 UK, It Came From Beneath the Sink UK, The Horror Camp Jelly Jam, Bad Hair Day, Egg Monsters from Mars, The Beast from the East, Legend of the Lost Legend, How I Learned to Fly, Chicken Chicken, The Blob That Ate Everyone, My Best Friend is Invisible, I Live in Your Basement, and Monster Blood 4. Yeah, I think I agree with all of this. I think I'm right. I do, I think I'm right. But as I said, you might have totally different opinions to mine, and that's absolutely fine. So do let me know in the comments below if you agree or disagree. Obviously, you might have different opinions, but please respect mine, I'll respect yours. But yeah, that is my tier ranking of all of the US and UK original Goosebumps covers. If I didn't mention a Goosebumps book, it's probably because it's not part of the original series. It might be part of series 2000 or onwards. But thank you so much for watching, I really appreciate it. Don't forget to leave this video a like if you enjoyed it, and subscribe if you haven't already. Leave all the comments down below let me know everything i'd love to chat here a huge thank you to my patrons for support my channel and making content like this possible if you'd like to join my patreon or follow me on any social media then all of the links are down in the description box don't forget to check out my other goosebumps videos i do have a playlist of my goosebumps post-mortem series in my channel so i will leave a link to that down below but yeah hopefully i will see you in the next video bye